is always good to see Michael. He's one of my heroes and uh, a guy I look up to at Ohio State. And when he mentioned to me that there was going to be a TEDx about disruption, naturally I thought, what would a TEDx about disruption be without a football player, right? <laughs> huh? <laughs> That's the world I live in. But we, we tend to call it a little different thing. We call it collisions. We call it major impacts and, and collisions. So when things collide in our world, that's when disruptions happen. And I used to have an old ball coach, Joe Gibbs, and us all he talked about, ball disruption, knocking people out. It's coach Gibbs, come on, that dude's too big. I can't do that, call it and calm down. <laughs> but after 13 years in the NFL and four years at my school down the street playing in shoe, I saw a lot of big collisions. But the reason I'm here today is not because of the collisions and disruption I've seen on that football field is because of an accident that me and my family had on the way back visiting my grandmother. See, my hometown of Williamsburg, Virginia is about two hours south of Washington, D.C., where we live. And about 10.30 at night, we collided with a parked car in the middle of the highway. And I'll never forget it. I was wondering how did I mess up and how did I not see this car parked in the middle of the highway. Naturally, first thing you do is look around and you try to make sure everything was, everything was okay and everybody was okay. And thank God, from the looks of this accident, you could tell that something bad could have happened and it didn't. My, fam, my sons and my, were able to walk away with just minor bumps and bruises. But the real devastation from this car accident didn't really hit me until the next day when I went to go get my cell phone and my wallet out of the car. And I remember looking at the car and the first thing I did was like, wow. I literally took a moment and I paused and I bent over and I couldn't believe it. I was amazed that we were able to walk away safe. Matter of fact, I actually took a knee and said a little prayer. And that's something I used to do before football, before I got nervous, I would bend down and say a little prayer. But at this point in my life, <clears throat> I was so awestruck by the devastation of my car accident that I just went to my knees. Got up, dusted myself off, I couldn't get in the front doors of the car, car crumbled down, I couldn't get in, go into the back seat, and I'm looking for my phone, and I reach over, and I grab my phone. But something else struck me. I saw this car seat in the back of the car that my five-year-old son was in, and I was just amazed that he could survive a big incident, a major car crash like that, nothing but a minor scrape. It's glass, and airbag, and everything been deployed on this car seat, and my son was not affected. See, I remember the very moment when I got the car seat because I had a buddy who was a president of Safety First, and he was talking my head off about this cool new technology and everything, and I kind of tuned him out because all I, all I was worried about, is it free? You know. <laughs> <laughs> everything works better when it's free, I promise you, you know. <laughs> but immediately the idea started brewing in my head and stirring up. How could I possibly use this technology in this car seat that saved my son? Could this possibly be applied to football? Could this be applied to everything else and impact protection? So I called up my buddy. I said, hey man, remember that car seat you were trying to tell me about? I want to learn more about it. He said, sure, come up and visit. And sit down with my engineers and we describe the technology and how it works. And I did. I took him up on his offer, because his ideas are brewing in my head, possibly if I could use this technology. And when I get up there, he sits me down with a group of engineers, and these group of engineers, they begin to talk about, well, it's a multi-layer system that not only absorbs energy, but it disperses energy, and that's different from any other thing that's on the market, and we spend millions of dollars creating this. And then they started to go on the impact profile and everything, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. stop. Make it simple that a football player can understand. <laughs> <laughs> Like the Geico commercial is simple, like a caveman can understand the football player, dude. I don't care about impact profile. I missed that engineering class at Ohio State, huh? <laughs> Why are they attacking people? What are you doing? Huh? But as he's talking and he's telling me about all the ways that this, this technology can work and this multi-layer system can disperse energy, and the unique thing about the padding technology, when your head, son's head, head it pushed the energy away, I began to spin like, wow, what if I would have had this technology when I played? Then I began to question, why haven't 
technology and helmets and everything changed and how way we look at impact protection. Why hasn't it changed? The same helmet that my father wore at Ohio State, I wore in my last year in New England. It was amazing to me, and I'm thinking about all the advancements in cars and all the other technology that's probably happened in the last 20, 30 years, and really the helmet space hadn't changed. So then that's where my idea and my company started, where we began to prove out the technology, my own money. I went, tried to prove it out, and it worked. I couldn't believe it, because I was baffled, and I was wondering why hadn't it changed. See, in my space, NFL, there's a problem. See, in my world, I knew that it was a major problem, and this problem is called concussion and traumatic brain injury. See, I just thought it was in the NFL because I just had a teammate, former teammate die, Junior Seau. Some of you guys might have heard of this story when Junior killed himself. And then and there was other, other, other people who had committed suicide, and you start to hear about soldiers, and you start to hear about girls in soccer leading uh, to the, end, to the youth football's necks and concussions, you start to see it's everywhere, it's on the media, it's whether it's on Time Magazine, it's on CNN, it's all over the place. And then as I start to stay, dig deeper, I realized that leading cause of death between the ages of one and 44, death and disability, was traumatic brain injury. That just, it just blew my mind. I just, I couldn't believe it because I was just so siloed in the NFL and thinking about it. It was only the NFL's problem. And actually, there's a movie that's coming out in December called Concussion that's going to put this issue on the forefront of our brains. And for me, I have mixed feelings, and this is the first time this is ever coming out. And as I was thinking through my speech, I didn't know how I really felt about that movie. See, as a parent and an entrepreneur, a guy who's trying to improve helmet safety, I want my kids to know about it. But as a former football player and an NFL guy, I don't not, I'm really not sure I really want to know about it. And that's the truth, because for many years, the NFL and Roger Goodell denied it. But we can't blame the NFL, because naturally, they're the biggest organization, bigger than National Hockey League, and bigger than baseball, major baseball, and bigger than everything. So naturally, everybody wants to sue the NFL, because they get the most spotlight. And see, for me, I'm not the type of person to pass the blame. Well, every now and then, I, I, I can't figure out why my uh, Bank fees are still high, three dollars for the ATM. But <laughs> we tend to blame things on, or we tend to blame one of the things we don't know about. I guess the bank has to make money. See, but when I start to dig deeper and why this hasn't changed and what was the real issue, I realized that the problem was more complicated than people think it is. See, it's naturally to push the blame on the NFL, and maybe the NFL was a little slow to acknowledge the fact that players are really suffering from concussions and the effects of concussions. Now the NFL has made some adjustments, made some changes in the way we tackle and the way you know, guys run on kickoff and different things, the way you practice and things have, have changed. But as I started to dig more into the NFL and realized that there's one fact that kept coming out as I started to think about the NFL. The helmets we wore and helmets that the guys wear today aren't manufactured by the NFL. So I could see why a little bit of the buck was passed to the manufacturer. See, and now I work with a lot of those manufacturers, and I can tell you that the big guys, they really, really believe that they have a solution they're trying to change. They all have kids. And for, let's face it, we're all motivated by, motivated by protecting our loved ones. And those guys believe that their technology is the best. But they also know that they suffer from some of the things that big corporations have to offer, like margins. They got shareholders. And part of the ecosystem of selling a product is very difficult, too. Because even if they wanted, uh, say, Rodell, for example, even if Rodell wanted to spend $150 and give your son the most protective football helmet to the high school, the high school couldn't afford it. See, high schools now are barely being able to pay for football teams and they're raising money through the booster programs. So that's an issue. So it's not just the manufacturer's fault and it's not just the NFL fault. Sometimes we have to look at ourselves. And as I'm exploring my company, I, I begin to ask my friends. It's like, man, what do you guys think about helmet technology and helmet safety? And it seemed to be two schools of thought. Some of them said, well, you guys are football players. You build your body up. It comes with your territory. You can handle it. It's just what it is. The second school of thought was, well, 
There's, the concussion is not going to happen to be solved in our lifetime, so there's really no technology out there that can really be the safest product. People, I will tell you today, we know it's a serious issue. We, we have the awarenesses out there. We become more aware. We can't have that attitude. We got to take a better action. So it's not just the NFL. It's not just the manufacturers. It's not just the end consumer, the ones who actually wear the product. We're all in it together as a teamwork because it can happen to anyone. And a lot of my friends believe that, you know, they can go buy a pair of KDs for $150 and buy a bicycle helmet for $9 and it's okay because the kid barely rides their bike. And they don't necessarily think it's going to happen to them. Let me tell you a story about one of my friends and a story that has inspired me and continues to inspire me. A kid named Zach Lenstadt. Today, me and Zach are friends. And I was fortunate enough to see Zach's story. I think it was 60 Minutes they had the story when he met with Roger Goodell. And, and Zach was a 13-year-old football player in a suburb outside of Seattle, 30 minutes outside of Seattle. And Zach is a good-sized kid. Actually, he used to start running back, and he's a star linebacker. And in the first half of the game, Zach's running the ball. And he's running, he's making plays, and he gets hit. He comes out, and the coach or trainer at the time, I don't even think they had a trainer, the coach or whoever the the professional was, a minister, whatever the standard was at the time for Zach. Goes in the locker room, comes out, second half, he continues to play, he's playing linebacker, he's making tackles. Immediately after the game, Zach walks off the field and he collapsed. Zach was in the hospital for 90 days. It affected his life, it affected his family. Now today, Zach is better. And I don't tell you that today Zach is better, and Zach is going to Bellevue Community College and he has a job. See, I don't tell you the story of Zach to scare you because Coach told you sports are good. I tell you the story of Zach to inspire you because the Zach Linstadt law changed the way we look at concussion laws. It started in the state of Washington where every school and sports organization had to mandate a concussion protocol. See, that was a change, and that was the start. See, you never know when life is going to serve you an unexpected collision. And hopefully you don't have to have a big collision on a football field like Zach did or a car collision that inspired change in me. See, my company, every day, we wake up every day. How can we make a better technology, not only for our kids, but your kids and everyone? How can we make ourselves safer? And how can we do our part? Because you never know when life is going to serve you an unexpected collision. So I ask you guys today, it's time to move past awareness and move to an action, and let's go and truly disrupt. Thank you.